Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Um, <clears throat> we are coming at you on September 25th, 2020, and this will be a special edition of our show. We're uh, planning on trying to uh, give a... Uh, a voter guide on some of the California propositions. So for some of you guys who are listening outside of California, uh, kind of give you a, a little bit of a heads up on some of the, you know, crazy stuff that uh, people are trying to pass here in California. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, you know, some of these issues carry over as well. So, you know, maybe that insight will help you out a little bit. Um, but uh, to, to kick off the show, I wanted to introduce you to the panel. So, uh, uh, the way this is currently laid out, uh, just underneath me, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, uh, Tim Ever. He is a pilot in the state of California. And uh, below him is Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a engineer from the state of California. And so, uh, once again, uh, crazy times, elections coming up, uh, in just about a less than, you know, a little over a month away right now, actually. And uh, so this uh, episode is to try to uh, talk some of those uh, propositions that have just come out. And so we've got the ballot guide here uh, in front of you, and you can look this up online uh, yourselves. Just uh, look for California Voter Information Guide, I think, and it's uh, at one of the uh, uh, state websites. Uh, so anyways, uh, there are 12, 14 through 25, and we're going to try and get through as many as we can in this episode. And if we need it, we will uh, carry some of these propositions over to a following episode. So let's jump right into Proposition 14. So Proposition 14 is a proposition uh, to push stem cell or bonds for stem cell research in the state of California. It's $5.5 billion in bonds uh, to uh, push that. And... Uh, you know, uh, we'll find out what our panel thinks, and afterwards I'll let you know also what Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association says about it as well. So, uh, one of you guys want to jump in on this one? I uh, say no, and hell no to Proposition 14. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. Don't hold back. <laughs> Here we go again. You know, they always tell us they're going to fund all these wonderful things that's going to help us become better human beings. And what do they do with the money? The mismanagement. They, they always mismanage it. The state is funding also the environmental crap right now. Why don't they stop some of that crap and fund this if they think it's so important? I say no. Hell no. The prep 14. Yeah, well, that's the last word right there. <laughs> Hell no. Or two words. <laughs> Hell no, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, the, the state of California is uh, on such strong economic footing right now with yes. tons of extra money laying around that, uh, sure, they can go into debt for another one and a half billion. What's that for research? Uh, no, if the research is so important, let's uh, let the private uh, uh, marketplace um, fund it. And, uh, you know, if there's something there, uh, I'm sure that they'll they'll be able to dig up that one and a half billion bucks. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, leave the beleaguered taxpayers of California alone. And that's probably going to be said about a lot of these propositions coming up. Yes. And and uh, just to jump in myself, I, I as much as I like scientific research, I think uh, in concurring with my other two panelists that uh, the research is something that should mostly be left to the private sector to fund, and uh, especially given, as Tim alluded to, the the uh, current uh, fiscal or financial standing of the state of California. I mean, they just released that you know we're over fifty four billion dollars in deficit in the middle of this COVID crisis, and that was several months ago when I mentioned that. So you know who knows where we're at at that point? This is just yet another five point five billion thrown on the, the pile. Uh, and to let you know, Howard, Tax Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association also says no on Prop 14. So we have a unanimous consent for that. But uh, do they say, uh, did, hell no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess one, close, one closing thought about this, I mean, this thing is so obscene to me, is that it's obligating future generations to take care of the commitments that we are about to make. 
So this this thing is this this thing is bad all the way around. So again, no hell no. Okay. okay. So the <laughs> hell no. <laughs> so moving on to prop fifteen. So prop fifteen is uh, essentially an erosion of our proposition thirteen. Yeah, you know, people op often hear about prop thirteen. That was. Uh, a past uh, proposition passed years and years ago in California to protect uh, homeowners from having property taxes increase too much as you know people in this state like to spend lots of money as we just saw in this uh, stem cell one on Prop 14. You know, there's always <laughs> yes. a in the state. And so the idea was that uh, uh, they wanted to put protection in for uh, property owners that the property tax could only increase by like one or one one and a half percent something like that per year uh, so that uh, it, it would be kind of predictable to people and they wouldn't be priced out of their homes on taxes uh, in, in this state and so the prop 15 actually removes that protection not from homeowners but from businesses because businesses also got that protection as well um, and so uh, my personal thought on this one and just jumping in is that in theory, I, I think it would be a lot more fair if all of us had, you know, just our property taxes based on whatever the market rate is. But we've just seen that if there's no protections in this state, you know, we'll just be priced out of our homes and businesses by people with all kinds of good ideas on how to spend our money for us. <laughs> uh, and so anyway, I, I uh, would say no on Prop 13. You guys want to jump in? Or 15, excuse me. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all jumbled. Yeah. Again, no, and hell no. Again. <laughs> one, and the thing that is deceptive about this thing is that in, in, in if you look at some of the arguments, you're talking about funding schools and all these sort of things. The schools do not need more funding. They need more competition. That's what the schools need. They don't need this damn nonsense. So I say no, and hell no to 15. <laughs> Yeah, um, if if we're going to live in a monetary system that continually inflates the the uh, or deflates, I should say, inflates the currency, and thus deflates the value of the currency, and we see that with uh, real property and and uh, commodities and and anything else actually, or most anything else, uh, unless it's your big screen TV that has the uh, advantage of economy of scale and, and increasing technology and so on. And and even in spite, well, you know, they if, if it wasn't for the inflation, they'd even be cheaper. So, but uh, with houses, so much of the increase in value is just from, is historically they have paralleled the uh, inflation rate. And so, uh, yeah, um, it, it, it incentivizes uh, government entities to increase taxes with Prop 15 style uh, propositions uh, by having a reward from uh, the government's uh, inflating the currency or, in, you know, and deflating its value. So, so I think, uh, you know, hey, <laughs> hey, wait a second, uh, you know. We get hit first by the the deflated current the v deflated value of the currency, and and then at the same time, to add insult to injury, they wish to tax us at rates based on those inflated amounts. I I say, uh, hey, you know what, you, you guys, oops, that knucklehead, uh, some some. Oh knucklehead. no, 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 sorry, sorry, that was just oh, okay. a computer okay. computer burp. <laughs> Oh, completely. Okay, yeah, that, that happens. So, so yeah, you know, um, stop, uh, you know, making the currency less valuable. Okay, and then then your tax monies on on the real property that was uh, originally based on the purchase price of that real property, uh, it'll stay the same. You won't you won't have you won't see uh, such a hit to your uh, tax bottom line. Uh, because of that, okay? So uh, if we're stuck in the fifth century on the value of our home-based uh, tax rate, then uh, maybe we ought to be stuck in the fifth century on the value of our money, too, okay? <laughs> but, you know, and, and perhaps, too, that, you know, if, if they didn't have so much incentive to, you know, drive up the price of property uh, in order to get 
uh, better, uh, yeah, you know, tax rates, then maybe we wouldn't have the housing crisis we have as well. Uh, but uh, anyways. Um, yeah, that's a good on. point, too. That's another yeah. good point. But it's it incentivizes them. Yeah. And people keep voting this kind of nonsense. Well, yes. maybe they won't. We'll see. But. Yeah. But, 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 but you see, but you see, they always do these use these these, these deceptive these these deceptive tactics to try and get us to vote for these things. Mm. Oh, let's do it for the children. That's the damn nonsense you always hear. Let's do it for the children. We need to fund schools. Yeah. Oh my God, let's do this. Let's do that. And they never do. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. never or, works out that way. Or we're no. the most heavily funded. Yet the as the funding goes uh, per student goes higher. The uh, results of the of the educational system uh, and the test res scores of those students goes down exactly. or stays the same. Exactly. Or just you know, the, well, so uh, okay, let's. In, okay, in the interest of the children, we got to move along. <laughs> 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 the host. <laughs> but, but, but I do want to also let people know Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association also said no on 15. So it was a unanimous no from the panel, but unanimous hell no. Okay. <laughs> no and hell no. <laughs> yes. Now, what I would like to, uh, this one is sort of near and dear to me uh, coming up is Prop 16. So that's uh, uh, one where essentially they, uh, they want to allow for affirmative action in California to do that, they essentially have to remove the following language from our Constitution. Uh, so they, they're going to remove this, keep in mind, this is something that's already in our Constitution. The state shall not discriminate against or grant preferential treatment to any individual or group on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity, national or, uh, origin, uh, in the operation of public employment, public education, or public contracting. Now, excuse me, I, I thought that was King's dream that we have there in the Constitution, and uh, these guys want to remove King's dream from the Constitution so that people will that. be judged. Yeah. Good imagine yeah. Not on the basis of their race. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, so my uh, personal thought on that is, is uh, hell no, I'll let you guys jump in on that. You know, Martin Luther King told us very clearly that he wanted his children to live in a nation where they are judged, not by the color of the skin, but by the content of their character. So instead of us judging by the content of our character or by the color of our conduct or by the capacity of our competence, now these wise legislators want to institutionalize Jim Crow again. Now we want to use race and sex, ethnicity and national origin to determine who should get jobs and who should get contracts. This is Jim Crow again. This is the reinstitutionalization of Jim Crow. And we don't need that in America in 2020. I thought we, the civil rights movement came into place so that people can be judged by their qualities that they develop, the content of their character that they have. Not this damn nonsense. No and hell no again. Yeah, um, yeah, I just uh, have to uh, agree, and I admire the candor of the people behind it because they at least admit that this will allow them to institute affirmative action to whatever subgroups or uh, minorities or classes of people they wish to um, extend those uh, privileges to. And it's been holding them back, this language, because it, you know, the they admit the 14th Amendment covers the discrimination aspect of it. And they, they think it also, though, that I thought was kind of odd. The 14th Amendment also prevents, uh, you know, affirmative action style things because that's discriminatory in the other direction. So anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's dumb. Let's just keep it as is. Well, that's a good point, Tim, that uh, this may run afoul of federal law as well. Uh, so as far as the uh, equal protection clause that you mentioned, but uh, it, another thing too, you guys mentioned the people behind it. So the brainchild of this one is Loretta Gonzalez, who we also have to thank for AB5 <laughs> as well. The one oh. yes. workers we will be talking about another pre uh, uh, proposition uh, coming up that uh, deals with that, uh, trying to fix some of the problems created by that. And uh, she is also the one who told um you know, uh, what's his name? Elon Musk, uh, when he said he was thinking of leaving for Texas, she said F you in a tweet. So that's the that's the kind of uh, uh, legislative brain power we have pushing this particular proposition. 
so anyways, uh, that's a unanimous no from the group. Who was this? Who was this, by the way? Uh, Lore uh, Lore Loretta Gonzalez, I believe is her name, or Lorena. Oh, okay. I don't okay. remember which one. But uh, she is the uh, one who pushed uh, AB5 as well, I believe. So anyway, okay. um, just wanted to uh, uh, let you guys know that. And uh, J Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, I have a position on this one, probably because, you know, maybe they don't see any tax implications on it. Uh, so moving along to Prop 17. So... Prop 17 allows parolees to vote and hold office. So I guess currently that isn't allowed, I guess, and this one would allow uh, allow for that. So uh, did, uh, you guys, either you guys want to jump in on that one? I don't mind the restoration of voting rights to, to ex-convicts. I don't mind it. However, I do mind them coming out of prison today and having a voting right to restore tomorrow or next week. I do mind that. If you look at recidivism rate, you are talking about almost 50% of, of, of convicts, ex-cons, I should say, end up back in prison within one year. And I think it's like two thirds within three years or within five years, some, some number like that. I think these people have to prove that they are standing citizens before they should be given back, given their, their voting rights. So I would, I would suggest if they wanted to amend this thing, to make it a seven-year waiting period before their voting rights could be restored, I will support it. But as it is presently worded, no. I say no. I wouldn't say hell no to this one, but I'll say no to it. <laughs> well, that's that's progress for you. You <laughs> <laughs> won't say hell no. <laughs> uh, gosh, yeah, it's, it's just for people on parole, apparently. Um, those that have completely served their sentences and are released, uh, they've already been, uh, <clears throat> I don't know how what the time period is. I don't think it's seven years, but they get their voting rights back. It's just for parolees that, so, you know, they let them out of prison and they're on parole. Now they could violate parole and get sent back into prison, or you could be completely out of prison, not on parole, and uh, have your voting rights, and then you can commit another crime and get thrown back into prison. So, um, you know, I see where, uh, I mean, that's a good point Leon made about, you know, let's, let's wait and see, because it's easier to get thrown back into prison when you're on parole than it does when you're completely uh, done with your sentencing. So, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm kind of vague on this one, so I really don't have a lot of concrete stuff to add. Okay. Uh, personally, too, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, iffy on it. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I, I certainly think in principle, if somebody has done something extraordinarily antisocial to society, you know, uh, committing crimes against other people, they should have at least paid for their crime before getting their right to vote back, meaning they've served their sentence, oh. you know, so they, they wouldn't be on parole. However, we have so many crazy laws that are putting people in, I mean, you know, geez, they're arresting yeah. people for wearing, ma not wearing masks nowadays. So, you know, I, I oh, do yeah. get a little bit concerned <laughs> that, you know, maybe we have some people who, you know, are otherwise responsible people in an irresponsible legal system. <laughs> and, you know, I, but, uh, but I think in general, I, I would tend to side no on this one. But, uh, you know, I, I can definitely see an argument for the other side on this. Uh, and uh, Howard yeah. Jarvis Taxpayers Association does not take a position on this one. No, so I, I am not. Uh, no, and I'm just to be clear, I am not saying that the, the, the citizenship should not be restored. I am just saying that I need to see. I mean, these, these, these people have a bunch of antisocial baggage next to their name. Yeah. And I don't yeah. see why they should be helping in the determination of the direction of this country until they have shown that they have gotten rid of this antisocial uh, behavior yeah. that they have engaged in. So I, I, all I'm saying, I don't mind the restoration. I'm just saying I want a waiting period before that restoration can occur. And I think seven well, years is a good time. Not to be too antisocial, but we've got to move on to the next one. All right, so, all right, yeah. That's a soft no from the group on, uh, <laughs> on 17. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Proposition 18. So 18 allows 17-year-olds to vote. Uh, in primary, uh, in a primary election, if they would be of legal age when the, uh, you know, the uh, actual election comes up in the fall, I guess. And so, 
uh, this is uh, one that essentially would just expand the, the voting rights of, uh, of 17 year olds. So do you guys want to uh, jump in on that? I say no to that, okay? It's bad enough for 18 year olds voting, okay? I say no. However, <laughs> though, even, <laughs> even though, even though, you know, I mean, at 18, you do, um, we do send our young kids off to war and to possibly die. So at 18, you know, it's, you know, we already made that decision as a society. But I certainly don't want to, to take this anywhere below 18 as it is right now. So I, I, I say no to this. Not well, hell no, but I, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just uh, have one condition. Um, because the United States Militia Acts have established 17 as the uh, age at which... Oh we are uh, required to become militia members. I think the, the, right. uh, that number one, they should, 17-year-olds uh, should be able to purchase and own a firearm, number one. And if they're, if they're in the militia, they got to have a firearm, okay? So they get to buy them and they get to keep them and, you know, kind of total control over them at 17 throughout the nation. And any states that have laws against that those laws are unconstitutional because it says right there in the constitution and the deck even i think it's even in the declaration that you know uh, militia membership begins at 17. so uh number one yeah they, they can go ahead and vote too at 17 and you know never mind what age they're going to be when the general election occurs that's that's convoluted if you ask me but I think they ought to be um, uh, voting at 17 if and only if they can also own firearms at the age of 17 as a condition of their membership in the uh, militia of whatever that state is that they belong to. Well, Tim, it sounds like so, that's a new proposition you should propose. <laughs> <laughs> they'll all go like this. No way. That guy's crazy. Well, well, as far as <laughs> I'm principal, militia act my foot. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, in principle, I think I'm, I'm kind of on board with you guys on this one. My, my main thought is that a person should be uh, of legal age to bind them uh, to to bind themselves to a contract before they can bind others to a contract. And that's what yeah. you're doing when you go to vote. Now, maybe maybe 17 should be that age. I don't know, but whatever age it is, I think we, we've all got to stick to it. And it should be one age for everything that we say, you know, is legal age to bind yourself to a contract. Well, I would vote no, uh, just to keep it, you know, coordinated on 18. Uh, and uh, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association also says uh, no to that one. Uh, so now moving on to 19, hopefully we can squeeze that one in. It's similar on a Prop 13 issue. Um, that is one where uh, essentially it potentially erodes Prop 13 a little bit. What happens is, is it allows people who are 55 and older to be able to transfer their Proposition 13 tax protection throughout the state. So like, for instance, if somebody was retired and they wanted to move from one county to another, uh, you could uh, keep your tax basis uh, in that move, uh, it would give that protection. However, it has some other sort uh, of catches in there, where essentially it allows for uh, a lot of properties to also jump back up to market value. Like, for instance, if a person, family member, doesn't move into that house within a year or something like that. So there's a few different catches, and essentially it will wind up raising a net. They're expecting it'll raise a few hundred million dollars, as what it says here in the uh, uh, you know for. Uh, different, I think that's for uh, counties, I think. So a local government could gain tens of millions of dollars per uh, property tax revenue a year. So uh, my, my personal thought is no, it's an erosion of, uh, you know, 13. But, uh, you know, what do, what do you guys think? Well, the main Instead thing that bothers looking, me about, oh, I'm sorry, Tim, go ahead. Sorry, Tim, go ahead. I was just going to say, and, and just hold that thought, Liam. And I was just going to say, instead of continually looking for ways to squeeze more money out of us, maybe I'll look for ways to, stop spending so much because uh, <laughs> revenues have gone yes. up, yeah. up, up. Revenues are way, way up. And yet spending is, is uh, up, uh, outpacing the revenue. So sure. uh, except for this, yeah, okay, COVID, uh, yeah, a little time out there. But, uh, and that was only because they shut everybody down. So, hey, uh, just look for ways to stop spending instead of trying to squeeze every last dime out of our poor depleted bank accounts 
Well, speaking of squeeze, can we squeeze you in real quickly? Huh? <laughs> oh, the thing, okay, the thing that bothered me about this is, is they're going to tax inherited property. I have a real problem with that. So I say no and hell no to this. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I think we have a consensus of no again on this one. And Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association also says no. And with that, we are running up to near the end of the show. And it is time for our Knucklehead Noise Patrol. So let me see. What do we have on the, uh, you know, what do our knuckleheads have for us today? Uh, let's see. So apparently uh, Princeton University President Christopher... Eisgruber uh, recently wrote a letter to his campus that says racism and the damage it does to people of color nevertheless persists at Princeton as our, as in our uh, society, sometimes by conscious intentions, but more often through unexamined assumptions and stereotypes, ignorance in, uh, or, or insensitivity and systemic legacy uh, of past decisions and policy. So he said that and that triggered a response from uh, Betsy DeVos's Department of Education uh, that said, uh, well, Princeton has admitted to racism, <laughs> uh, which raises the question uh, about uh, the accuracy of uh, non-discrimination and the equal opportunity assurances that they made uh, to the Department of Education in exchange for more than $75 million of federal money. And so with that, they're saying, hey, we've got to investigate you guys now. because, yeah, And it really goes back to the, the issue of all of these people who want to prostate themselves to say without talking about evidence of how racist everything is and how racist. Yeah. And so essentially he's been called on it. He said, we're so racist and we really want to do that. So, okay, if you're racist, there's a penalty for that. <laughs> of course. You know, I think, I think, um, I think Betsy, Betsy DeVos is absolutely right on this. You know, these white liberals who think they want to save us, they're going to keep talking this damn nonsense, and these things are going to keep on happening. That's why I hope Trump wins this election. I really do hope so, because I want more of these people to be investigated. Since they want to sit down there and talk about, oh, we're so racist and we want to fix the problem, fine, let's fix the problem. I want to see more lawsuits when they claim they're so racist. Oh, my goodness, we're not treating minorities right. We're not treating black people right. So, oh, God, we got to do something about it. Well, yes, let's do something about it. I want all of these people to be investigated since they want to admit their racism. Please do it. <laughs> what was this guy, uh, the, the school guy that said this? What he was, was the, pres last, he's the president of Princeton University. Uh, it was Eisgruber. Eisgruber. Yeah. Eisgruber. Okay. Eisgruber or something else. Yeah. Eisgruber. 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 It should have been eyes goober instead of goober, but that's okay. <laughs> and that, that's like the bad guy from uh, 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 the the movie, um, what you call it, Die Hard, you know, Hans yeah. Gruber. But this yeah, guy's eyes like Gruber. Okay. Yeah. There you well, go. That, that's, uh, that's our libertarian counterpoint for you today. So thank you so much for joining us. And we hope we helped you on your voting decisions. And we have more propositions for our next show. So please join us again for then. We'll look forward to seeing you at the next show. Thanks so much. Yep. Toodle.